crying is a sign of weakness, full stop. I mean, the night you came with the ski mask, black gloves and a baseball bat, and he had a shot. Mm. To rip one's clothing, that's prohibited. To pull out one's hair, it's prohibited. To hit oneself in the face, prohibited. Betrayal, problems, danger. Hey, when they printed a picture of me and my brother and he put a red dot and said we're going to end them off. That was a hard time. Me personally, I used to think that this was a deficiency. It's not actually an act of worship to be sad. That, that's a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> if you have knowledge and it didn't cause you to cry, then that wasn't knowledge. If I'm angry, you'll see it in my face. It's definitely not healthy, I'll tell you that much. Like I, I'd cry in the back of the car, I'd be quiet. We'll get to the masjid, it'll be maghrib, my whole face wet. Try to do something shocking. Mm. <sighs> Bro, when I start. <laughs> Why don't you go to your wife? Why don't you go to your parents? Why don't you go to your siblings? Why do you go to your mom? The thought of losing a child is, it's obviously something. <laughs> I try to make some of my mum unhappy a lot. So I just wanted to make her happy, you know, I wanted to make sure she was always happy. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amma ba'ad, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Brothers and sisters, welcome back to another episode of Chai with my bai. So in today's day and age, there are a lot of opinions, a lot of things being said online about men, how men should be, how they should behave, what kind of emotional state they should have, so on and so forth. Now, when it comes to the issue of men and their emotions, specifically when it comes to crying, there are a lot of opinions out there. You have people in the red pill corner saying that men should not cry whatsoever. Crying is a sign of weakness, full stop. You have others that would like to see men as whimpering, emotional, I don't know what the word is, but just... Neeks. Neeks, for lack of a better term. So with that said, let's get into the discussion today. Adam. Oh. Whoa, see, you liked a little faint. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it feminine for a man to cry? Bismillah alhamdulillah wa sallallahu sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man walah wa ashadu an la ilaha inna Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh I would definitely say like you mentioned there's two extremes to the, uh, to the situation to the issue at hand lacking for a blanket statement to generally just say that men who cry are feminine I definitely say not because there is asal in our religion there is an asr with regards to crying. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam cried. Uh, a beautiful narration for this on the authority of Abi Huraira, radiyallahu anhu, where he mentioned aynan, and he, there's two eyes, la tamasuhuma an nar, that two eyes the hellfire doesn't touch, and one of them is baket, and he, it cries. The eye cries min khashiyatillah. That these two eyes, it cries out of the fear of Allah Azza wa Jalla. So generally speaking, you know, if a man cries with regards to his affairs with Allah Azza wa Jalla, then I'd rather say that it is a manly trait that an individual cries in those in those types of situations opposed to it being a feminist, uh, feminine characteristic. Yeah, I mean, I mean, so the reason why you cry differentiates so what's an example of a cry that would be considered a feminine cry so before we come to that i just really feel like it's important to echo this point here because a lot of brothers who are practicing brothers as well who have that macho approach some of them still don't cry some of them think see it's something that's praiseworthy i hear the quran i don't cry i don't cry at lectures i don't cry or some of them maybe don't see it as praiseworthy but if you don't cry and your brother who's on his dean that's actually scary the greatest man and there's no man better than him was Rasulullah he would cry. He would cry to the point where his chest would reverberate. Okay? Like a, like a sound would come from his chest. Do you understand? When he's reading the Quran. Something that he would do regularly, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one time, he would cry when he's reading the Quran himself, and he would cry when the Quran was read on him. You know the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, when the Prophet said to him, he said, Iqra Ali. 
read the Quran on me. And he said, Alayka, he said, Akra alayka, wa alayka unzil. He said, Shall I read on you, a Messenger of Allah? And the Quran came on you? I, like, I mean, how can I read on you? Like, it came on you. And the Prophet said, I love to hear it from other than me. And then he recited Surah An Nisa up until he came to the eye where Allah Azza wa Jal he said, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا And how will it be on that day, Muhammad, when we bring from every single nation a witness and we bring you over all of them as a witness? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he started crying. He started crying profusely, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. By the way, a benefit here, just as a side benefit, because it's connected to crying. Ibn Uthaymi, Rahmanullah, took a beautiful fa'idah. He said, sometimes you will cry when the Quran is read to you in places where you wouldn't cry when you read it yourself. Like sometimes you might read a surah and it didn't affect you the same as when someone else read it on you. And me personally, I used to think that this was a deficiency. I mean, in me personally. And I, I used to think sometimes like it's easier to cry when it's being read on you. I found that, right? And, um, and I thought maybe that's something wrong. I don't know, maybe I thought, is it, is it an ikhlas thing? What, what is it? Uh, but that brought a lot of solace to my heart. The Prophet did it. And sometimes mm-hmm. hearing it being read on you, it can touch you. Of course, a person should cry when he reads himself as well. Mm-hmm. But it can be that way as well. So the point is, and Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala, mm-hmm. he had two marks coming down from his eyes. Two marks that were khattan, uh, aswadan, two black marks, black lines. Does that make sense? Um, from the tears from that the streamed tears. down his face. Like imagine, like, you know, like when you keep making sujood, eventually what happens? You get a dark, dark mark. mark right here, right? So, mm. sujood's one thing. Like, he kept crying. Is like, that an actual thing, yeah? Say that again? Th- this is the thing. I think you put the, pressure the, the on, of... on that part of your. So, I, 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 so like some people do it, like, they just. I don't know. A lot. The, uh, a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sheikh Ali that mentioned that it's actually sunnah to put more emphasis, to put yeah, pressure the, on your toes, to put pressure on that. Yeah, the Sheikh Ali this is, mm. is, is, is mubalak oh. for sujood. And when you go in, you push your toes into the ground. The ground. But is there a delete for that? Allah alam. Point being is that, generally speaking, that um, um, when you repeat something on a particular body part, like for some, some of us will realize because we sit in the shower position, on, on, on our feet, there's a, usually a mark, a dark mark, because you sit. Mm. On that foot, right? So imagine, for him, it was tears. That just showed you how much the 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 Amir al Mu'minin cried. No, Umar was a man. Abu Bakr radiallahu taala also a man, and he used to cry. Can I so What were the reasons behind their crying? Was it they were upset? They were emotional? Was well, it? So people, people, well, I want to actually mention this also from the Hadith of the Prophet and before you mentioned Umar Khattab radiallahu anhu. One thing you nice. benefit from it as well. It's actually a Sunnah to ask someone to read the Quran upon you. Yeah. It's actually as soon as the scholars they mentioned. Not for Ruqi, I mean just, just general Quran. Yeah, just so they could just hear the Quran. So, Abu Bakr al Kana Yabki used to cry. And then when he used to cry, he used to say, I just need 30 seconds of your time, inshallah ta'ala. I promise it's going to be incredible. It's going to help you become the best possible man that you can be. I know there's a lot of confusion and a lot of talk about what it means to be a man. Some people want to listen to Andrew Tate. Some people want to listen to the Red Pill movement. Some people are confused. What's manhood about? Is it about women, sleeping with women, and being strong and making money? Or is it a bit deeper than that? Well, I'm going to show you from the Quran three ways that you can become a great man. If you focus on just these three things, then it's going to give you a solid foundation of becoming the best possible man you can be. And you know you can't go wrong because it's from the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. These are things that I implemented in my life and I'm going to show you how to implement them. And like I said, it's absolutely free. Just click the link below and start your journey and become the best possible man. With that said, let's get back to the discussion. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. All of you cry. And if you don't have the ability to cry, fatabako, force yourself to cry. We should force ourselves to cry. Ibn Qayyim said, if you got to a point where you're not even able to force yourself to cry, then cry over the fact that you can't cry. That shows the situation. So the reason we cry, multiple reasons people cry, people cry because of fear. We cry because of hope. So for the sake of Allah. Just, in, so, in that paradigm. So these apply to Allah. It mm-hmm. can apply to... Oh, fear, oh, right, it can be natural as well, right? A person fears something, mm. he cries. Uh, when it comes to Allah, it's either fear 
or hope or excitement to meet him and, and in his mercy, right? You cry because you hear an ayah about Allah's forgiveness. So you feel love and you want to meet him. And then sometimes you cry because you're scared of the punishment. If you cry for your sin over a sin that you did, out of fear, right? So um, these are the various reasons you cry. Sometimes people cry because they're sad and whatnot, so on and so forth. It's important to mention here, by the way, that Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmahullah ta'ala, has a risala. I forgot what it's called, but it's in the suluk, the Tazkir to Nafs section of Majmu al-Fatawa, where he discusses uh, different actions of the heart. And he mentions one thing which is important, that it's not actually an act of worship to be sad. It's not an act of worship to, to be, be sad. sad. Like some people think, like as in the fact that you're told to cry, and it's encouraged to cry, that crying is not out of sadness. Like some people believe huzn. Like to be in a state of sadness is virtuous and it's an ibadah. There's something the Sufi, and if I'm not mistaken, Ibn Taymiyyah criticizes them for it. Don't quote me on that, double check it. But he does, does refute this concept of that. You know, some people, they believe like being sad. Maybe they don't vocalize it, but it's like an internal kind of like being sad, like we should be sad. No, we shouldn't be sad. We should be happy. The Prophet said, you say, Ya Bilal, arihna bis salah, right? Give us. You know, ease and, and, and joy for the salah, for the adhan. And he used to find happiness with his loved ones and his spouses and his children. The Prophet you know, كان يضحك, he would laugh, not too much. The Prophet also, he, he said, لو تعلمون ما أعلم. He said, if you knew what I know, لا, 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 لا ضحكتم قليلا ولا بكيتم كثيرا. You would have laughed very little and you would have cried a lot. And that, the Prophet is not crying because he's, we're supposed to be sad. And sadness is inner within itself virtuous. No, it's because of fear, because of hope. Naam, you can be sad because of a sin that you did. But the sadness is an effect. It's not, it's, it's, it's not the thing that's sought after inner within itself. It's a result, an effect, an outcome of sins. No problem. That's good. You should be sad of a sin that you did. But you shouldn't seek sadness. That's my point. Right? It's more so like nadama opposed to regret. But, regret but, yeah. No, but you do feel sad. When a person doesn't sin, you feel sad. You regret, you feel, and, and I guess regret, yeah, you feel sad. But we were told to make dua to Allah to save us from sadness. And we'll talk about that later, inshallah. What are your thoughts, Sa'ad, what we've discussed so far? As in... Um, Men crying. Oh, generally, yeah. No, uh, of course, I mean, it's it's not a feminine thing. It's it's not. I guess the, the way you'd make it, the way it would... It would turn to be feminine is based upon the reason for why someone's doing it and the manner in which they're doing it. Because we know from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, one of the things that he prohibited, um, well, the Prophet ﷺ had prohibited the women from going to the graveyards. And the reason for that was due to the excessive crying, the wailing that they would do, right? Um, so obviously the fact that the Prophet ﷺ prohibited the women for that shows that that's something that the women would do. It's a feminine thing to do, which is to wail and to excessively cry. Um, so anything which is done in sort of that kind of manner uh, would of course come across as something which is feminine. And then also the reason as to why someone's crying. Uh, if it's not something which like, any deserves... A girl broke up with him and he's broken and crying. Pillow crying, yeah. That, that's a bit weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely. Also, just one I I mentioned, you know, which um, Subhanallah, if you think about it, it's extremely powerful, and because uh, and, and it might give a hint to some people, a direction of how to, you know, get to a point where maybe Allah can bless you with crying, uh, over him, and 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 due to him and for him, Subhanahu wa Taala. Um, Allah Azza wa Jalla Surah Al Isra He mentioned. Um, the people of knowledge who the ayat through the Quran is read when it's read on to them what's the reaction Allah said we khirruna lil athqal Allah this, well, this, uh, this ayat is so powerful Allah said we khirruna lil athqal that they fall lil athqal what's, what's, what's athqal it's the plural of a chins yakhir they fall yakhiruna they fall you expect it on their faces in sujood, no, they fall on their chins. Uh, no, they, they fall, not, not that their chin is on the earth, sorry, not that they fall on their chins, but it's when you imagine when you've gone into sujood, the point that he was mentioning earlier about going deep into, into, into sajda, it's showing, how, it's showing how deep this sajda is. That's like, it's like you're putting your forehead on the, on, the, on the ground, it's not telling you put your chin, but it's like you're so humble, it's like your chin's going into the ground. Does that make sense? Yep. 
يبكون and then and then and then they will cry. Allah Azza wa Jalla said, and then the scholars took from this ayah that this talking about people of knowledge. It's talking about the people of what? The people of ilm. And Imam Al Dari, may Allah Taala, he brought a narration. Where he mentioned, I'm not sure if it was from himself or he was quoting someone. Uh, he mentioned that if you have knowledge, and it didn't cause you to cry, then that wasn't knowledge. And then he said, because Allah said this in this ayah. So you know, and I'll leave it on this. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, There are seven on the Day of Judgment. Allah will shade them from um, a shade, a shade from the sun, right? On a day where there is no shade and people can be drowning in their sweat. And one of them is uh, uh, a person, ذكر الله. He mentioned, he remembers Allah when he's alone. ففاضت عينه. Uh, okay, Maqal, his eyes, they, they pour with tears when you're alone. And it's important to mention that all of these things that we're discussing here, um, all these things that we're discussing, um, this crying should be in, in private. I thought I was going to come on to because you mentioned two things. You said, number one, the manner in which they cry. Number yeah. two, the reason why they cry. And you earlier, as we were in the cafe discussing this, you mm. said that a man shouldn't cry in front of other people. Generally, yeah, his should. crying should be in person. Uh, sorry, in, yeah. in solace. Oh, yeah. So the type, the type, with regards to crying, one needs to focus on the way he cries, and when he cries, where he, when? how he cries, and when he cries. So, for example, he mentioned the pro, the, pro, the prohibition of wailing. So wailing is the type of crying, to to scream, have a loud voice when one cries, as prohibited. Likewise, to rip one's clothing, as prohibited. To pull out one's hair, it's prohibited. To hit oneself in the face, prohibited. This is what wailing is. So, a type of crying that is, yani to yani you're going beyond bounds. And this is from the sifat of a woman. So it's a feminine trait for someone to do such a thing. So that's mentioned. Not get anywhere near that. To the degree we see the salaf radwan Allah alayhim when they used to pray in jama'ah After the salah, you would find their beards soaking wet, but they would not cry to the degree. The person next to him would hear him. Obviously, we have the hadith and narration of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Aisha radiallahu anhu. She mentioned every time she didn't prefer him to lead the salah. Why? Because every time he read the Quran, he would weep, and it would be difficult for him to lead the salah. Mm-hmm. Like an individual who's quiet, following in the salah to the degree he wouldn't allow the person next to him to hear it. Is that from an angle of sincerity? They don't want one hundred percent. But at the same time, it goes to show the the style of crying. The Controlled. style of crying, yeah. Even the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you see, when is because we mentioned that you know you asked, do we only cry for Allah? Obviously, there's any dunya reasons why an individual cry, family member losing, etc. To the point when Ibrahim, you know, the son of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he passed away, he said, al yani, yeah, the the eye is crying, and the qalb yahzan, and the and the heart is kind of is saddened. But what did he say? He said, "La naqulu illa ma yurdi al-Rabb." He said, "We don't say anything except which pleases Allah Subhanahu wa Taala." But in the manner he mentioned, that it's just kind of shedding tears. He didn't cry. So that's also the characteristics when you're in public and things like that that you don't go over and beyond in terms of making noise and trying right, your best. But to if cry. a person is not able to control it and naturally overcomes them, then that's not blameworthy. But there's times when the Prophet would also hear Some him, Sahab would noise. hear him crying, they would hear his chest, they would hear the noise come from him, Sahab But noise. generally speaking, it is safer from the anger of sincerity. Because you don't want to let shaitan come and mm. make your intention change instead of crying now for the sake of Allah, you transition mm. to crying so people around you might think, oh, look, this guy, he's righteous, or so on and so forth. It's also a distraction as well. How many times have you been in the masjid in, in, in Ramadan and you're praying and then you hear this one guy, the loudest guy, just crying? Mm. I mean, usually, I, 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 personally, I don't find it to be an issue unless it's like sometimes someone else's crying can affect you excessive. But yeah, yeah but usually, what I find is if someone else cries, someone. that usually yeah. affects me to make me cry. I, I don't usually ever, maybe once. I can't even remember yeah, like that sometimes, time sometimes when I heard someone when you see a slave of Allah crying to the and the way the he's been affected by the Quran, it affects it has you. An impact, yeah. Mm. No, but he's, generally, see, his humidity. But I guess yeah, yeah. just generally speaking, you're not supposed to disturb people on it. I guess there mm. maybe, maybe yeah no it's definitely maybe some screamers <laughs> yeah no it's not good it's not good so let's go a little bit more general now in terms of men and emotions because the other day obviously myself and yourself were having a bit of a discussion right mm. and uh, bit of a deep conversation bit of a deep conversation and 
certain things were mentioned, certain names were mentioned, and you know, your eyes were teary. Mm. What was the what was the reason behind that? So me personally, I'm a person. I'm 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 a person with my emotions on my sleeve. Yes, that's not something I'm shy about either. Mm-hmm. If I'm angry, you see it in my face. If I'm happy, you know. If I'm sad, you see it. If I'm hopeful, if I'm optimistic, I'm passionate, I'm motivating, you're gonna see it in my face. How are you feeling right now? You got a poker face on. <laughs> a little bit frustrated. <laughs> frustrated, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I came in a little bit frustrated. <laughs> Point being, though, is uh, yeah. So look, sometimes. Yeah, I, th- I personally feel like I'm personal, I embrace my emotions, but with that said, I think it's important to contextualize because we were talking about this earlier, and Adam was like, nah. And I no, like, he, he was in front of his wife. No, he was no, saying you shouldn't cry in front of your wife. Just, but the point being is that what he understood was like, what? And it's not. It's not no, it was literally just. Uh, it, it wasn't even no, crying. That's what he understood. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I did understand. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah oh, he okay, understood. Okay. So, mm-hmm. point being is in. And then obviously, he was like, okay, cool. He approved of my crying. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's natural. Look, me, I'm like I said because I'm I'm an emotional person. Generally speaking, when I'm frustrated, when I'm even sad, um, my innate kind of um, reaction, based on how I I've been for most of my life, is to become furious and to become angry, and obviously that's not healthy. So the way I'm able to overcome that is through shedding a tear. Obviously, we're talking outside of religious. Kind of motivated uh, crying, right? Are there like certain, you know, like people say that like there's certain, either might be a memory or it might be like a person or a place or like, you know, like there's a certain part where like, it's like, no, I, I stay away from that. Why? Because there's some kind of turmoil yeah. or something that's going yeah, to lead to emotion. I definitely believe there's some things that I bury. Yeah. I, I try not to bring them up because it would be good if all I did was cry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, understand. Because <laughs> they, they are going to pull me to anger. Go, so. um, but point being is, yeah, like, um, yeah, I mean, if, I, if, if something sad happens, yeah. if someone dies, if someone struggles, someone goes through something, you see something emotional. Yeah. It could, it, it, so, and, and by the way, it's not just in situations that are negative, positive. Like, I, I also shed a tear out of happiness, yeah, out yeah, of joy. Yeah, 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 like, it. yeah it's like pretty normal, personally. Yeah. I mean, when was the last time you cried? Who, me? Yeah. A lot. Don't know. It's a while, probably. Can't remember the last time you cried. It must have been a while. No, ago. actually, I do remember the last time I cried. Yeah. Do you like, mind sharing? It was a few years ago. Wow, you have not shed a tear for a few years. <laughs> no, I. Are you talking about outside of religious reasons? No, it's just, 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 just generally. I mean, I recently was going through the five star Omar footage, and there was the reminder that you gave in part three. That was back years 2018. Ago. Yeah, well, that you was know, years ago. we don't want you guys to go through what we went through. Yeah. There you're shedding tears. Yeah. And publicly it's happened in very particular moments. Mm. But yeah, probably Usually Umrah. <laughs> Umrah and then that one child by Which Oh one? yeah, the one about the free mixing. mixing. But that was really a religious isn't reason. Yeah. But probably Wait, do you remember? What, what what? And you started crying? Oh, I, actually, I yeah, genuinely don't remember moment, that. Yeah. Do you feel like there's certain things that make you cry? There's certain things that Definitely. So, masters, I don't cry because mm. I'm 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 a I'm a huge introvert. I keep my emotions to myself. I will walk the streets and I won't smile. I won't be sad. I won't be happy. You won't know what I'm on. I'm just saying, I'm about to talk for hours. Yeah, I, just, I mean, it's it's the the more quiet I am, the the less a person can pick so up on healthy, me. Healthy, as in, do you feel sometimes that it's like building up within? And you know, there were times randomly where you just be in the car, and just scream. Like to release the to, <laughs> to event. So yeah, do you feel so. like that's part of? Yeah, I, it's definitely not healthy. I tell you that much. It's definitely yeah, not healthy. Should cry more, it's um, and I, I I feel like um, for example, when I came to the, came here, right, I spent a lot of years on my own, a good three to four years. Um, so obviously in that process, when you are upset about things, and you can't talk to anybody about it, then it's like you can feel it. It's building up. It's building up. And that may cause a person to say X, Y, and Z that perhaps they didn't want to say. So I do feel like it's unhealthy. I don't I don't feel like people should always just keep things in, they should let it out. Even if it's just talking to somebody about it. Um this this line between um uh, this line between a person going for a problem 
and wanting to complain to Allah, but also wanting to speak to somebody about it. I don't know how this line meets, if that makes sense. Because sometimes doing both helps rather than just one, because sometimes you need like immediate consultation to speak to somebody. I guess that's where Shura comes into it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Adam, when you're feeling like that, feeling emotional, feeling you know, a bit of internal turmoil going on, do you have a person that you go to that you speak to? Yeah, most definitely. Who do you usually go to if you don't mind us asking? Uh, so I, go, I go to Umbra a lot. <laughs> this one guy. Yeah, I go to Umbra a lot, mashallah. Why? Um, why don't you go to your wife? Why don't you go to your parents? Why don't you go to your siblings? Why do you go to Umbra? You know what it is? I don't I don't go to Imran for anything and everything. It's usually with, with regards to those situations, if someone understands the situation or if a situation occurred and one was there in the occurrence, so he understands, I'll usually stick with that for that particular situation and just keep keep it like that, keep it in that avenue. So not everyone knows my business. So I just Makes sense. So it just depends on the situation at the time, who was involved, etc. that I choose to... So when was the last time you cried? To? Uh, the last time I cried was Alhamdulillah. Last time I cried was like Salat Fajr, you know, the, the Imam. Barik. So Alhamdulillah, but that was Allah just like <laughs> <laughs> that was just that was me. But if if I were like in terms of like really crying, then the last time I cried was a few couple weeks ago. I mean, when I was with Abu Taymiyyah. Yeah, I, had sharing, a, what I had a good uh, ten-hour cry session. <laughs> For 10 hours? Yeah, it was, it was on and off. That's 10 right. hours, yeah, it was, it was a lot. Yeah, they'd come in different form. Like, I'd, I'd cry in the back of the car, just be quiet. We'd get to the masjid, it'd be maghrib, my whole face wet, talking in the dust, still crying. People think I have a khushu in the dust, but, you know, my head's somewhere else. Mm. But yeah, I was, I was crying a lot. I was just thinking about something that happened, and just, you know, sometimes it's good to you know, do to double over actions that you've made in your life and, you know, be able to cry about it. I mean, I needed to get it out, if that makes sense, because I didn't have Sometimes the opportunity. Have to, yeah, I didn't mm. have the opportunity to speak to anyone at that time because right now I'm fi khidmati. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm at a service right now. I'm, I'm, so That's can, the thing, as men, majority of the time you are at service. Yeah, you're yeah, in a place yeah. of responsibility, you're in a place of authority. And well, we're like the crying, generally speaking, in, in it is seen as 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 a weakness. So, for example, like if your wife was to see you just crying all the time, or even cry, you, you might not want them to see that because even like, for example, if something happens in the family, you know, usually the men are the ones who will be like the backbones in that yeah, moment, try and pull everyone through. Like, guys, listen, don't worry, it's okay, it's happened, whatnot. Even though they themselves feeling it, going through it, but just because they want to be the the what's the what's the word for it, the backbone, the back, they want to be that supportive structure behind it so they'll sometimes push it to the side but then like you said sometimes it just has to come out yeah especially if you like you mentioned you don't have that outlet mm. just you and Allah uh, that's, that's the best time for it to come out like Yaqub yeah. alayhi salam well, I just, so, I so here's the thing because when it comes to especially when it comes to the issues of like mental health which I'm still to this day struggling to get my head around exactly what is mental health I feel like you know how this day and age everyone's got a definition of what is a woman like, you know, someone who identifies as a woman for like everyone today's got their own definition of mental health, mental health, mental health, mental health. So I still haven't yet fully grasped the concept behind mental health. But when people say about men and mental health, men don't really have anyone to go to. Men, that's kind of what triggered the Red Bull movement, if I'm not mistaken. That all like men are victims in this and this and this and this and this. So what are the avenues that men can take to be more in touch with their mental health or to be to have a healthier mental state, psychological and emotional? Well, I mean, like, that's what I was going to say. There's no better way to do with it than to just go to Allah, bro. Like, I could lie, man. I've had some situations in my life that have been very, very sad, very dark, been to some very dark places, bro. You understand? Extremely dark. You name it, bro. Betrayal, problems, danger, like. Can you oh. name one? <sighs> bro, where did I start, bro? Just name one. I mean, the night you. Came with the ski mask, black gloves, and a baseball bat, and he had a shank. <laughs> you had a shank? Yeah, he put knives all around the room. Yeah. It was, it was, it was not what you think, guys. But it was a hard night. 
these men are going to be thinking, yo, <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys on? Hey, when they printed the picture of me and my brother and they put a red dot and said, we're going to end them off. That was a hard time. Mm. Yeah, tough time, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like I'm saying, point being is, the specifics of it is whatever. I just go to Allah, bro. It's, it's so... It's so satisfying and fulfilling to just take your problem and cry out for Allah. Like you feel so relieved. And Allah, man, it really always hits me, bro. You know, Surah Yusuf, when at the end, when Yaqub, alayhi salam, he lost Yusuf, the love of his life, as in his, the, the, his most beloved son at the age of, they say, seven. Then he lost Benjamin. Benjamin the second then his oldest son when then when he had the news he said he said I just complain of my pain to Allah I've got no one else and he was sad bro he cried so much was the eye when his eyesight his eyes when he man his sadness made Lose the eyesight. Imagine being so sad. Imagine being so sad, bro. Imagine you're struggling with the loss of your kids. You're so and it's decades have passed. You're so sad. You cry so much. He cried, bro. You cry so much that you lose your eyesight, bro. But the beautiful thing here, and the reason I'm bringing this up, because you asked about mental health, bro. He was not broken. That's the thing because I've seen that being used by yeah. people online in the context of like I'm depressed or whatever, but no, like even Yaqub al Islam was depressed. Like he, he cried so much that he lost what his eyes. He said, bro, bro, he's 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 crying the most and feels the most pain. His sons ha have given up hope, saying, Dad, he's gone, you're still gone about Yusuf. He said, I know from Allah what you don't know. But I have remember I said to Yusuf, so you correct me if I make a mistake here. Don't despair in the mercy of Allah. Only the kuffar despair in the mercy of Allah. The whole time he said, and then he's saying, go, go back out there. Go look for Yusuf again. Ach, he's positive. Mm. He's po that's the thing. Like, I'm saying, I don't believe crying is a problem. Like, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, like I said, you, and look, number one, a mansion is definitely true. Like women is expected, like they'll just cry. Mm. And no disrespect to our sisters, but I think anyone who's got a sister or a wife or a mum or a you, like women, they just it's, it, crying is not something uncommon. Mm. So, generally speaking, like men are supposed to keep it together because imagine if someone's crying, it's a sign of pain. Imagine everyone in the room's crying. So, what, is everyone just in pain? Who's the leader? Who's gonna help us? Who's gonna help save the day? Do you get me? It throws off. So, I'm not saying, but I feel like it's not. Wrong to you, and you can cry and still be positive. It's about having resilience. Yeah, you can cry and still yeah. be tough. You could try and cry. This and is still one of the things through. when I was looking at mental health online. One of the key themes behind it is your resilience dealing with life's problems, like things that life throws at you, how you're able to navigate through those. So when I hear about it like that, for me personally, I don't know, my mind, the way I've just always viewed things is that like Allah will always make a way out for you. Like, so I've never understood how can someone get fully bogged down to the point where you've lost hope. Because you said, Yaqub al he didn't lose hope. Yeah, he was upset. He cried. He was really upset. So much so to the point where his eyes, he lost his eyesight. But he didn't lose hope. And I feel like that's the problem is that this day and age people, when they say, oh, look, I've got, I'm struggling with my mental health, whatever, they're literally, they've locked themselves in the room. They're just crying all day or playing video games or they're locked, you know, just eating comfort food or whatever it might be. They've they're not doing any work, they're not being they're not doing anything at all. Just this is this is what mental health is. But in the Quran, Allah says, Allah doesn't burden a soul with more than it can bear. So no matter what it is you're going through, you can bear it. Why? Not because I said it. Allah I, think it said goes, it. I think it goes down to the aqidah of a Muslim, you know, and the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jalla. You know, if there's a beautiful hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he mentions May you read Allah be khaira Mm. And if Allah Azza wa Jalla, He wants khair for you, for His slave, and He tests him. Is that another laf? Yeah, you could either say you sub or you sub. Yeah, well, yeah, so that's a sign that Allah Azza wa Jalla loves you. 
the fact that you're going through what you're going through. You know, Allah Azza wa Jalla, the most beloved people to him were the Anbiya. So that's why they were tested the most. And then those who come after them. And then those who come after them. To the point the Salaf Radwan Allah alayhim, they used to get scared when things were going okay in their life. When they weren't going through anything. So the fact that a Muslim is going through something, Wallah, he should believe in the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jalla that nothing comes to a believer except that it's khair for him. You know, if he's grateful and if he's thankful. For indeed, that's true happiness. You know, even Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, he mentioned his, his qawa'id al-arba'ah, even mentions in, in the muqaddimah, he said, he was making dua, أَيَجْعَلَكَ مِمَّنْ إِذَا أُعْطِيَ شَكَرًا وَإِذَا بْتُلِيَ صَبَرًا وَإِذَا أَذْنَبَ اسْتَغْفَرًا وَإِذَا أَذْنَبَ اسْتَغْفَرًا فَإِنَّ هَذِهِ الثَّلَاثَ يُعْنْوَانُ السَّعَادَ That these three things, if you accompany them with one another in your, in your life, then indeed you're going to be what? A happy individual. And that is being grateful when Allah Azza wa Jalla gives you something. And when you're tested, you're patient. When you're tested, you're patient. And then when you go through something, you make istighfar. And if you commit a sin, you make istighfar. Do you know what's shocking? Is that some of the scholars, when they actually talked about tests, the asal of test is that you're patient. And the as, as in, what, what comes to mind when you're tested is you should be patient. And what comes to mind when you're blessed is you should be grateful. What's shocking is that some of the scholars they actually mentioned the highest level of gratitude is to be grateful for the test. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you understand? It's that sabr is, oh, it's hard. What's sabr? Habs and nafs is to control the nafs so you don't lash out, right? But like the highest level of gratitude. Alhamdulillah for the test. Huh? I said Alhamdulillah being. I should tell you something shocking. Nuh alayhi salam, when you think about his life, what do you think? Stress in it. What do you think? What do you think about his life? Like, his is it family, nine and fifty years. So, nine and fifty years doing what? Falling down and no response or nothing. So then, when you, when you, when you, when you think of uh, Nuh Ali Salam, how do you think? Like, what what word best describes him? Patience or gratitude? Patient. That's 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 what you, that's what you say, right? What you think, yeah. Allah Azza How did he describe him? Um, just trying to find the ayah because I don't want to say it wrong. Should we come back to you? Allah said, when he described him, he says, certain he was a slave that was extremely grateful. In my research, I found some people that were like online from the Islamic sphere who would say that mental health issues, problems that you see around today, people talking about whatnot. It's just a case of low iman, a blanket. Like, it's not a real thing, it's just low iman. Your iman's low, that's why you're feeling like that. If you do things to get your iman high, seek knowledge or do it about it, so on and so forth, your mental state will get better. And then you've got flip side people in the comments usually going nuts saying, no, how can you say that's so insensitive, that's jahil, ignorant, whatnot. What, what, what do you guys think of that? Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely makes sense based upon the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that Adam mentioned, right? About the prophets being tested the most, um, and then the um, then the righteous people, right? And then those that came after them, those that come after them in terms of levels of iman, in terms of their righteousness. So the people that have more iman, the test becomes more. But because of their iman, they're able to handle it more. Does it make sense? Um, so yeah, it's true. Like the more iman you have, the more ilm you have, the more knowledge, the more action you have, the more you're able to bear the problems that come to you. But I was going to mention another point, which is, um, um, like Adam mentioned, like it's about understanding your aqidah, understanding you know the names and attributes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and just knowing. Look, when when a test comes to you, when a problem comes to you, a musibah comes in your life, what's the way you're supposed to handle it? How are you supposed to go about it? Um, and and the, the 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 essence of that test or that uh, you know that musibah that comes to that trial, it's just to see whether you're going to get closer to Allah or not, you know, 
that's why some of the scholars they mentioned the difference between a trial and a test and a punishment is based upon when it came to you, did you get closer to Allah? Did you move away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And, and it always, you know, I always remember the, the hadith about, you know, Akhir yeah. zaman at the end of times, yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send an earthquake into Medina, right? And there are people who are in Medina that will get scared and they say, we have to leave Medina. And those are the people who are the munafiqun, the hypocrites. Right, because we know from the Prophet Ali that Medina Muslim. is a place of safety, and he, the, the jail can't enter inside. There is safety for the believers that are inside there. Um, but that's Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is purifying Medina from those bad people and leaving the believers there. And so, the, the test when it comes to you, if you deal with it in the right manner, which is remembering these things about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, that Allah won't give you a test more than what you can bear. It gives you the ability to cope with the problem and to cope with the musibah, and as a result, you should be doing more ibadah, you should be doing more worship, you should be making more dua to Allah, you should be doing more sunan, you should be doing more based upon that in order to receive the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, you know, eventually it goes away. Yeah, so we may, uh, yani if a musibah comes to them, how do the believers react? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi they run back to Allah. Azza wa Jalla. Like, you and know, you're not. Sorry, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. no. And I, I, I feel like, because I, I had a very staunch opinion, not necessarily saying that this was the correct opinion, but I'd never resonated with people who always said, I have depression, I'm feeling down, mm. you know, especially coming from, coming from the streets. Like, Likewise. Yeah, we just... Likewise. Just, yeah. No, no, as in, I just never really had a... I'm not saying I'm street. I'm just saying I never really had a... Uh, yeah, me too, not street. <laughs> yeah, I never really understood the whole concept of mental health. Yeah. But yes, but I'm not going to lie, Recently, I went through something um, where I, I was like down, really down. And I'm not gonna lie, I, I going through what I went through, I could kind of resonate and empathize with those who are like, who quote unquote, go through this type of depression. But one thing that helped me through that whole situation was just Qiyamul Layl. Just turning back to Allah Azza wa Jalla. And personally, yani, like we've seen with this, the MBA, and likewise the Salaf, the Sahaba, etc. And like what Allah Azza wa Jalla mentions, what they do is they just turn back to Allah Azza wa Jalla. And for the one who's sincere and he really makes Allah Azza wa Jalla his marja, his returning point, in terms of him being strengthened, in terms of the situation being changed, then I feel like that's, that's definitely the, the greatest outlet, not the best outlet. It's the greatest and the only outlet, and that's what's going to take you out of whatever you're dealing with. Whether depression is real, not real, mental, like all of that thing. Whatever you're going through, if you really turn back to Allah Azza wa Jalla and you make dua and you, you have that dialogue and you increase that relationship with Him, subhana, whatever you're going through, Allah Azza wa Jalla is going to give you that strength to bear it. Even the Quran mentions whoever turns away from the members of Allah who do a sad life or a depressed life. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, just to echo what Adam just mentioned, so I remember there was also a point in life which is a very very difficult time for me right extremely difficult time um and uh like i said alhamdulillah i'm actually very grateful to Allah for all of that which he's put me through because it made me very tough do you understand so like you said in it you have to suck it up and just get on with it um, obviously that night that I referenced earlier where you came with the ski mask black guys baseball bat the one where he had the knives all around and whatnot and so on and so forth obviously it was a stressful situation but how were we that night we were in problem solving mode next day like I, as in my thing was okay cool I have to come up with a solution bang life's in danger it's long it's about family's to, life's in danger right it's long so what do we do we're gonna do x y z boom and we Execute the plan. Does that make sense? Made a phone call. I said, Abbas, we saying yeah, you were the nice of earlier. Like, I need you with the keyboard and the code, <laughs> <laughs> guys. I promise, no everything. So anyway, <laughs> next thing, I'm saying problem solving mode. But obviously, you're you're carrying it right. And what, what you don't realize is that it, you're working, you're grinding, you're trying to get out of whatever it is that you're in. But naturally, it will take a toll. And I started to enter a period of extreme sadness. So you know. When people say, I couldn't get out of bed, I thought it happened to me for the first time in my life. Remember, right? Like, as in, I was, like, I was trying to go hard. Me and for, like, boss remember that huh? very well. 
That's mm-hmm. me and a boss remember very yeah, well. Yeah, right? We would speak about it every day. Really? Would you say that you were depressed yeah. at that point? No, I, depression is a, is is like I'm saying depression is a state that people describe themselves with, with some degree of like long term. I was sad. I don't like to use that word, bro. Like I like to, you know, even earlier you asked it's about not like it's not like he wasn't reading Quran. It's not like he wasn't doing his data. But yeah, it's just it was, after when you were unable to get out of bed. No, I was just sad. I was just sad. Like I said, you know, earlier you asked the question, like, bro, do you think mental mental health um, is because of weak iman? That's what you said, right? I asked the question. But my my, my figures, I'm not with that question. Because what the hell is mental health? And people are not going to get offended when Sa'ad and me and Adam, we say, no, yes, because you're Iman. Because truth be told, we're, we're, we're referring to something, but we associate the meaning to it, and they haven't associated the same meaning. I like to That's just the use, point that I was saying. Yeah, I like to use words Allah use. Allah is already, you mentioned what? Uh, Al-Huzn, okay? al ham al ham right? So Huzn is sadness. That's what I was talking about, yeah? Right. I, when you asked me the question, I wasn't responding to mental health. That's what I'm saying, that's what he's I talking about. I was responding about. to the question so, about just general sadness right. and pain. So sadness in the past is a, is Huzn, okay? Ghum is presence, a present, and 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 and, and, and ham is in the future, in the future. i.e. anxiety. So grief in the past, Okay, mm. distress in the present, gham, and anxiety in the future. So I'm saying, yeah, like when you now when you say mental health, act like man's that what what man's done is <laughs> I've basically given myself a label now. Do you understand? And yeah, I have to labels fit, are not good. Huh? Labels are yeah, not these good. Yeah, these labels Because I can't be real with you. Me, I'm dyslexic. Right? And I mentioned this to you like many a time. And it makes sense to people when they see my spelling errors uh, on online all the time. But I'm saying I never knew about my dyslexia until after I graduated and, and, and after I finished university. Do you understand? It's a limiting belief. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, I, now then when that hit me, I was like, bro, man's dyslexic. But I used to, I read the whole dictionary. Mm. I read uh Sir Arthur King Doyle, Sherlock Holmes, like I'm, the original fat book. Do you understand? And now bro, I read Hamda Banga a book a week. I read in Arabic and English. Point being, there's is a what? theory that mental health, the reason why it's spiking, some more people are attributing themselves to it. Attributing themselves to it because they're hearing about it. Because like, they're oh, hearing about it. That's me. It's called the self fulfilling prophecy. We studied this in sociology and school. And then, here's the beautiful thing. Here, not beautiful. Here's the crazy thing, the shocking thing. I remember I, when I look back at the kids who used to be the dyslexic kids in school, I don't mean this with any disrespect, Wallahi, no disrespect. But it's like they were always the kids that you'd think like they had like, special needs or something. Please. Now I was just going to mention because we went around and discussed the last time everyone cried, right? Yeah. <clears throat> My source, it wasn't too long ago, I think a couple of weeks ago. Um, it was actually off the back of, you know, the episode we did on the why? And it's funny, like that actual episode which you set us a task to do right before the episode, which was I think about six key moments in your life that made you who you are or whatnot. And um, I remember I started that straight away. I didn't like it. I didn't want to do it. That's why I, I actually changed it to, if you know your why, you don't have to mention six things. Only if you don't know your why, you have to mention six things. So I was like, maybe I know my why, right? And I, I can't remember what it was. It's just during the episode, you were saying something about an experience that made you, I think you were about when you were 10 years old, you gave it a reminder or whatever, I don't know. And then from there, I'm, you know, I, I'm not sure if I picked it up on camera or whatever. But like, you know, sometimes you, you can feel it coming, but you're just holding it back. I remember I dropped you off home. And as I drove back, yeah, I don't know. It's weird, it was just like, not weird, really, no, it was just, literally just tears streaming down. But it's just, I don't know. And I thought like there's certain things, the past being a big one of those, that will just, I just, I don't know how to navigate. I'm, I'm generally speaking, like anyone that knows me knows I'm not a very emotional person. My wives will tell you that, my parents will tell you that. I'm not a very sentimental person at all. I can go weeks, months even without even messaging <coughs> my own parents, my own siblings, my own wife, like, like I said. I feel like they sat in there though, sometimes, you know. It comes out occasionally here and there, but... Is that mental health? Allah, I don't know. What was the, re- what was, what was the, what was the story? What was the memory? We ain't got enough time for that. <laughs> You got enough time for that. Save that for another. Enough time runs off. You can lock off the mic and just start preparing for the next set. But I'm asking as a friend. You can have that discussion, inshallah. I have that discussion. Yeah. I just saw my mom go through a lot of sadness growing up. 
feel like my parents got divorced when I was younger and it's not easy for, especially like in a South Asian culture and whatnot. And uh, And I feel like that's where my wire comes from as well. Because I tried to make I saw my mum unhappy a lot. So I just wanted to make her happy, you know, I wanted to make sure she was always happy. And that kind of just became like a life goal of mine. Just, just to make people happy. Yeah, we'll leave it there, inshallah. Can I just mention something? Yeah. Yeah. It's just a general benefit, and I feel like, um, inshallah, I hope you'll be a benefit to a lot of people. <sighs> One of the reasons that a lot of people, they, they go through problems in life, they go through sad experiences, and etc. Um, a lot of it comes down to the way that you're raised, right? So sometimes... Mum's there, dad's there, sometimes mum's there, dad's not there, sometimes dad's there, mum's not there, sometimes no one's there. Um, sometimes everyone's there, but it feels like no one's there at the very same time. Um, and that can obviously make someone feel like, um, you know, they're alone, can't get through problems, they can't do much in life. And it, it, I mean, it takes them through a cycle of, uh, of um, thoughts and problems. But I always remember a line of poetry um, that was mentioned um, regarding the Prophet ﷺ. Because the Prophet ﷺ didn't have a mother and a father when he was born, right? Um, I mean, by the time he turned the age of six. So, um, but the poet, he said, he said, لَيْسَ الْيَتِيمَ الَّذِي قَدْ مَاتَتْ وَالِدُهُ إِنَّ الْيَتِيمَ يَتِيمُ الْعِلْمِ وَالْأَدَبِ He said that the yatim, which is obviously an orphan, someone that doesn't have a mom, doesn't have a dad, you know, obviously in the Sharia, someone that doesn't have a dad, but also if you don't have a mum either. But he said, Laysa al yatim, the yatim is not the one, Alladhi qad matat waliduhu. It's not the one who doesn't have a, whose father's passed away and he's died and there's no father involved, there's no mother involved. It's not that. Well, I can, Al yatim, Alladhi yatimu al ilmi wal adabi. It's the one that doesn't have any knowledge and doesn't have any manners. Um, and I guess that's really what it comes down to. I and mean, if a person just spends their life learning, progressing, developing, and then implementing that knowledge, you'll produce the best version of yourself. Enough for you to get through these problems and these issues and etc. Um, yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. I think we'll end it there, inshallah. The links will be mentioned. The link for the course that I spoke about, forgive and forget, will be in the description down below, inshallah, as well as any of the links that we mentioned in any of the ads that we did in this video that we haven't yet recorded, so I don't know specifically what to call them. But just know the links will be in the description, inshallah. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, comment down below. It helps with the algorithm. And we'll see you on the next episode of Chai with my Bai. You know, we went from just water to one coffee. Perhaps next week there'll be two coffees and who knows, we might even have some chai. See you in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa tubu ilaik.